my mind just went to that wonderful Bible in the Year podcast where you always hear that same line, man, oh man, what a gift, what a gift. And it's so true. There's, there's so much in this mystery, the second joyful mystery of the rosary. And there's, there's just, there's so much to rejoice in. So we can only just delve in just a little bit. But as many of you know, Maybe many of you maybe don't know, but when Luke writes this passage, he wants us to see that Mary is the Ark of the Covenant. She's the new Ark of the Covenant. And there are many things that you see connected to the encounter when David has the Ark of the Covenant brought to him. There are many different things at the same place that that's happening, this hill country of Judea. You hear John the Baptist leaping in the womb the same way that David leaped and he danced with abandonment. And then you hear the words of Elizabeth, how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Again, word for word pretty much, except the word mother instead of ark. How does this happen to me that the ark of my Lord come to me. And so let's let's look at that image of the Ark of the Covenant. And what does David do and what does John the Baptist do when they are in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant? They dance, they rejoice. And it's a rejoicing in which they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Something very similar to what happens at Pentecost when they are filled in such a way that there is a, many people think it's an intoxication. They are drunk with too much wine. And yet there's a different kind of inebriation. It's that joy of being overcome with love himself. And what else can you do but sing, dance? And that's what Mary does as well. She's just so filled She's already full of the Holy Spirit, but there's just this overflowing. And she proclaims the greatness of the Lord. That word proclaim is, is magnify. And how do we enter into that mystery of Mary? How is the Lord being magnified within our own lives? A way you can think of that is at the Easter Vigil. From one candle the same flame, but it starts going to all the other little candles. And that light, which is the same light, all of a sudden is stretched over the entire span of the church. So much so that you don't even need lights at times because it's so beautiful, it's so bright. And that's what the Lord is wanting to do in our lives. He wants to bear forth Christ, the light in your heart, through the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, and with a Marian heart. There was an archbishop in, in Mexico in which he spoke about the Holy Spirit and how we're called to have a true devotion to the Holy Spirit. Like we have a true devotion to Mary, Though they're on very different planes because Mary is a creature and the Holy Spirit is God, but there's a similarity there in which if you look at the mystery of the Annunciation, you look at the mystery of the Visitation, you see that you have a Mary heart and the power of the Holy Spirit, and always through that, Jesus Christ is conceived and Jesus Christ's presence goes and fills fills the sanctuary like incense. The sanctuary of our heart, of our body, of our soul. And so we need to ask, do we have a true devotion, which means my heart is for my mother. My heart is for the Spirit. I make room for both of them in my life so that when Mary comes, we learn how to have her kind of heart, that heart of saying, I am yours. 
The Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. Notice how Mary is proclaiming the light of the world, but she says very clearly that she's not the light. And isn't that also what John the Baptist would do later? I am not the Messiah. I am pointing towards him. So both Mary and John have these beautiful roles, different but similar in the sense of they're called to reflect the light, to be like moons. And it's actually really interesting is that word magnify in Greek is mega lune. It's like to make big the moon. And so it's this beautiful way of allowing the light of Christ to just come forth as we allow the, the moon, the soil of our heart, to become Marian. And then we just allow the Holy Spirit to come and to allow Christ to be born within our lives so that we might have the mind of Christ, we might have the heart of Christ, we might allow our body to be a temple of Christ. So that as St. Paul would say, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And that comes from Mary and the Holy Spirit working in our heart to bring forth Christ. What I would encourage you to do is to take this Magnificat. What a beautiful prayer. It's one that Mother Teresa of Calcutta would say, Mother Mary, pray your Magnificat and Fiat in my heart. She would do these ten-finger prayers. And the fiat is saying, Lord, I want what you desire for me in my life. And then the Magnificat is proclaiming what the Lord is doing in my life. I receive and then I proclaim. The Magnificat is spoken or sung by the church during the evening prayer of the church. We call that the Liturgy of the Hours. And there was a saint, Saint Venerable a venerable bead, a monk. And he would say it's fitting that this Magnificat would be proclaimed by the church every single evening. So there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people throughout the world every single evening who are praying this prayer. And you could be a part of that as well. You can pray this prayer in the evening. And he says that it's a beautiful time because after the busyness of the day is over, the soul begins to rest. And it's there where we can contemplate the greatness of the Lord. We can have the Marian heart to do what Mary did. She receives the events of her son, and it says that she ponders them in her heart, contemplating them in her heart. So maybe maybe make a little tradition of it's, it's a, it's a one-minute prayer. But maybe get a little card or pray the Liturgy of the Hours, however you want to do it. But this, my soul proclaims the, mag proclaims the greatness of the Lord just in the evening. Just pray this out and allow Mary and the Holy Spirit to work on your heart so that you can live out the spirituality.